Um, I want you to think about your life five years ago, just to make it easy, 2018, okay? Where were you in 2018? Like physically, do you remember? Physically, where maybe you were in different places, but try to pick one place that you were in 2018. What were you doing with your life? Like what was the ambition that you had, the plans that you had for your life five years ago? What were you dreaming about five years? I know it's a while. You might not remember, but in which stage of your life were you five years ago? Can you connect with that? Five years ago. Probably a lot of things changed for you, for me too. I'll share with you where I was in my life five years ago. I was actually on a Nomad City event. This is not sponsored. This, this is real. Uh, it was in the south, right? In Maspalomas, if I'm not wrong. There was a big auditorium and all of that. And I was watching the, the conference just like you are on that side, right? And I was, this is not true, right? Uh, inviting the speakers for 2019. So it was the year before. And I remember that I was like very impressed with people living a digital nomad life and all the flexibility level and all of that. I was already working remotely since 2014, but I was not a digital nomad yet. So I was where you are at the moment. And then almost five years later, now, July 2023, I'm here on a stage. So it feels like very special to be here on the other side and be able to share uh, a bit of what happened during this period and what I've been uh, doing as a recruiter. I was like Michelle, I was also a recruiter uh, for 15 years. I have been working remotely for nine years. So yeah, in five years, my life changed a lot. So in five years from now, we can be in a totally different space than we are now. So just a reminder about it. And then being a bit vulnerable here, um, this is not a fancy or a nice thing. But anyways, it's also real. When I was planning to come here to this event, right, I was in Zaragoza, it's a city in Spain, and then I start checking uh, how to come here, right? And I assumed that I had to fly from Madrid or Barcelona in Spain because they are bigger cities. I just took for granted that that was the way to come here. So I start checking flights and prices and all of that. And then I decided to go from Madrid. So from the house I was in Zaragoza, I took a taxi then I took the train, then I took a bus from the train station to the airport, and then I took a Ryanair flight. There was a, a VIP lounge to give a bit more glamour, but it was not glamorous at all. It was like a full day traveling to get here. And then I figured it out. There were flights from Zaragoza, the city that I was, yes, and pretty much the same price. So I felt stupid. I was like, why did I assume there was not another way to do what I had to do? Why I didn't ask people? Why I tried to figure it out it all alone? So I felt really stupid when that happened. I mean, I'm here, everything worked out well, but what I learned from that is that maybe if you are considering a remote job, you also don't know there is an easier way to get there. There might be a shorter path to get you from where you are now to um, a more flexible life and you might not know about it. So stop, don't do like me, <laughs> don't make the same mistake. Don't assume that you need to figure it out it all alone. And also uh, don't assume that other people are not willing to share how they got there. So people are, some of them at least, happy to share their journey and save your time in the process. For me, time is life. So people say time is money. I mean, who likes money here? Only me? Oh, okay, a few more people, okay. Time is money, life is, money, time is life, all of that is together. But if you can uh, save time in your remote job search, you're actually saving time to live your life the way you want. So the job search itself is not fun. So let's see how you can speed up the process to get on the other side and achieve the results you want. I will talk, uh, Michelle and I, we try to complement each other, right? It's one talk after the other, so uh, let's see if I won't repeat her much, hopefully not. So I pick up some of the uh, most common mistakes that I have seen my clients doing when trying to land a remote job. So mistake number one is that they are willing to accept any job, any job, as long as the job is remote. So as soon as they see remote job, they click the easy apply on LinkedIn, and that's it, that's enough. Yeah, I want a remote job, a more flexible life, that's it. This is a big mistake because from the company's perspective, they will not hire you just because you want a remote job. I mean, from their perspective, they don't really care 
if you want a remote job or not. You need to demonstrate that you are a good match for that position, that you have the skills, that you know how to do the job. So stop thinking that just because the job is remote, if I say I want a remote job, they will hire me. That's not how it works. So also from your perspective, your job su should support the lifestyle that you want to have. So if you just want to have more time to pick your kids, pick up your kids at school. You don't need to go for a company that allows you to work from anywhere and travel because you don't need to travel. On the other way around, if you do want to travel and be a digital nomad and be here next year for the next conference, you need a job that allows you to travel. So you cannot go for a job that forces you to be in the same state or in the same city. So don't just go for a job that is remote because it might not support the lifestyle that you want to, to have. Mistake number two, also very common, is that you assume, again, the assumption, right? You take for granted that you need to be really, really qualified to work remotely. You need one more certification. You need to maybe uh, have an MBA. You need to study for two or three years that specific thing. Otherwise, you never land a remote job. This is a mistake. Because who are the professionals that actually land a remote job? Mainly... There might be exceptions, but mainly what I have seen is, first, people who have visibility to remote companies and remote recruiters. So if you want to work remotely, you need to be in places where uh, remote people are, where remote companies are present. Recruiters need to know about you. They need to understand that you are good and you want to work remotely. So get visibility to the right companies and to the right recruiters, and also have the right strategy. Just be... Uh, you know the expression, spray and pray your resume, like a spray a graffiti. It's, you apply to as many jobs as you can, and then you just play, pray that a company is going to call you. This is not effective. This is a lack of strategy. So visibility to the right company and to the right recruiters and the right strategy to get there instead of assuming that you need one more certification, one more course, and more years of experience. This is mistake number two. Mistake number three is to do what everyone else is doing. So just because your friend landed a job doing X, it doesn't mean it is effective. It might have been just lucky. And it doesn't mean it's the best way to do Remember me with my airplane and all my journey? So I got here, right? But definitely was not the most effective way. So don't do what everyone else is doing. And if you're like... But what is everyone else doing when it comes to job searching, right? One thing, the favorite one, is the easy apply button on LinkedIn. Do you know what I'm talking about? For the ones searching for a job. There is that blue button. You click easy apply. And then one more window will pop up and will say add your resume. You attach it and then you apply. So it's very easy. With two clicks, you apply for a job. That's what 95% of job seekers do. I'm not saying it's not effective, but it's not the most effective way or it's not the only way to get there. The spray and pray, that's what I say. Um, I said, uh, apply to 10 remote jobs per day, so five days per week, and then that's the way to go. Probably not. Uh, casually searching, right? When I have time, you know, when a meeting is canceled at my job, then I just search for jobs. So create a plan block time in your agenda to do that instead. And then sending the same resumes to all remote jobs. Michelle, spoke a bit about resume, so you should adjust your resume, tailor your resume for each job that you're applying. So you have one that is like a master resume, and then you make adjustments to it. The opposite of that, um, actually, this is what everyone is doing, so the opposite of that is what you should be doing if you want to be more effective when landing, try to land a remote job. Mistake number four, assume that you must invest in expensive education to land remote jobs or um, keep studying, keep learning and postponing the thing, postponing the fact that, yes, I'm ready to land a remote job. So just in case, the just in case is very dangerous. It's like procrastinating the getting your hands dirty to actually land the remote job. So instead of that, be specific about the remote job you want to to get, what do you want to do? Do you have experience on it or not? What do you really need as um, further education? Maybe nothing. <laughs> Maybe you're completely ready to, to go for it. So map the reality of the job market. I remember a client, she was like, I don't have a remote job because I don't have a Scrum Master certification. She was a project manager. And I told her, like, who said, 
Who told you that you need a Scrum Master certification? Well, I just think I do. And then she was hired two months later. She never had that. She never got the certification. I don't know if she got it so far, but it's like stop assuming that you need something before checking the reality of the the job market. Understand the real requirements and then maximize your transferable skills. Who knows what is transferable skills? Very few people. Yeah, you, it doesn't count, Michelle. You can, yeah, lower your hands. <laughs> the others, the others. Uh, the skills that you learned may be in a different job, in a different context, in a different industry, but that you can use in another job. So, I don't know, time management, uh, leadership, communication skills. So this is not tied to only one job or one industry. So what you learned in one area, you can transfer to another area and then you probably qualified for other jobs. So stop postponing going serious about landing a remote job because you're not ready yet. You might be more than ready, actually. Mistake number five, suppose that you can only work for a remote company in your home country. This is very common. People assume that, yeah, I'm going to work remotely, but I need to find a company in my own country. Like, who said that? Like, why? Why? In an office context, that's correct, but not when you work remotely. And I do get that's true that most of remote companies, they will have some kind of limitation, geographic limitation, uh, your nationality, maybe the time zone that you're going to uh, need to work for. I get that part that's correct, but it's still there are some companies that they will hire people from anywhere or from different countries that is not your home country. So be open to consider companies that you have never heard about. You might not be familiar with their names, but it doesn't mean they are fake companies. And also read the job description carefully. If it says only for U.S. citizen, then you don't need to waste your time if you're not born in the U.S., but there are exceptions. So just open your mind for companies that might not be in your um, radar yet, but they are remote and you can end up working for them. Mistake number six, um, there was a photo there, I think. Maybe not, or I forgot the photo. Yeah, anyways, try to picture which photo could be there. I also don't remember. That's not the main point here. Uh, mistake number six, take, take for granted that uh, working remotely, you're going to have a lower salary, no benefits, lose all the benefits that you have, and you need to start in a junior position. I get that complaint very often. I don't know if you hear that, Michelle. Like, I don't want to lower my salary. I don't want to sacrifice, you know, I have medical insurance. I have a retirement plan and all of that. I don't want to lose all of that just to work remotely. It's like, who said that you need to lose all the benefits and go low in your salary because it is remote? I don't know where it came from. I actually know some remote jobs, they have very low salaries, but also some office jobs, they have low salaries. So let's just, you know, keep in mind that those are real examples that I got from LinkedIn. Uh, I think a 200 euros, uh, 200K euros salary per year, it's okay, right? To start, to start with. So uh, those are some examples of decent sellers that you can find out there. All of them are remote. So just keep in mind that not necessarily you need to lower your position level, your salary, and lose all the benefits just because you're working remote. You can combine a remote job with very interesting uh, benefits and make a lot of money also. Mistake number seven. This one, I feel really sorry about it because... Um, you think like, oh, I'm very smart. I'll never go, you know, I'll never fall for that. But I know some people that are quite smart and then they, you know, ended up getting involved into it. Some lost money. Some just lost their time. Time is money. Time is life. And they were, you know, doing, going further in the process and they figured it out it was a fake uh, remote company and all of that. So just pay attention. They are very basic things, but just, you know, uh, stay alert to it. If you don't find the company's name, on the internet, if you search on Google and you don't find the company's name, if you go on LinkedIn and they don't have a LinkedIn page, nobody mentioned that they worked in the company. Hmm, red flag, that's weird. Uh, being approved without a single job interview. So you fill up a form, they love the form thing, because it's cheap, right? Fill up a form, two days later they contact you, congratulations, you got the job. No interview, I didn't speak with anyone, so those things happen, that's very suspicious. Uh, asking you to pay <laughs> to make the interview. So the, the recruiter is an external recruiter 
So she needs to get paid to do the interview, but as soon as we hire you, we are going to pay you the 200 euros back in your first pay slip. Like, no. Or you, you need to pay the fee for us to send your laptop home so you can start working, but when you receive your paycheck, you should not pay to work, to get the job. You should not pay for that at all. Type of mistakes, the classic Google Translator, maybe ChatGPT will do a better job, but if you read the job description, it doesn't make sense. It, there is something wrong with that. If it feels too good to be true, amazing salary, amazing flexibility, it might be too good to be true, and listen to your gut feeling. If it feels wrong, probably it is wrong. So just pay attention to those things. Mistake number eight, ignore the importance of your online presence. Michelle spoke more about LinkedIn, about your resume, about a cover letter, if you decide to send a cover letter. So just take into consideration that those things will be probably the first filter that recruiters will use to choose between you and the other person. So just make sure they are um, up to date and showing your best version online. That's also very important. Stake number nine, um, say that you don't have remote work experience when you actually worked remotely during the pandemic. So this is interesting because, I mean, I know, I know that working from home is not the same thing that working remotely, especially working from home during the pandemic. I get it that we are talking about two different things, but when you are searching for a remote job, you can maximize the working from home experience during COVID. If it was one month, that's already enough. Make the most of it. So um, make the most of it in your marketing materials. Here I'm, I'm considering the LinkedIn, resume, and cover letter. So talk about it. Make it clear that, hey, I worked from home during COVID. I have some kind of remote work experience. Make the most of it. Share what you learned during this period. Mention the IT tools that you work, for example, Zoom. Everyone now use Zoom. So, oh, it's so obvious. Well, it's not obvious. Put it on your resume. Put it on your LinkedIn profile. Make those things more explicit. Showcase your skills and important, share that you want to work remotely. Not everybody wants to work remotely, right? So make sure that this is a priority for you. And last but not least, just 10, because 10 is a beautiful number. I could share thousands of mistakes, but let's stick to 10. Uh, give up when you start receiving no's. So uh, the market is competitive, and you're probably going to hear several no's in the process. What is going to make you succeed and land a remote job? or land a better one if you already have a remote job, is persistence and the right strategy. That's what is going to give you the results you want. And do the right thing long enough. Repeat the right strategy, the right uh, steps until you get there. And then learn and adjust in the process. There was never a better time to land a remote job. And I know that a lot of companies are forcing employees to go back to the office. So don't focus on those ones. Focus on the ones that are solid remote companies and searching for you know, the best people in the market. And yeah, just make the most of this option to have the flexibility level that you want to have. There is one more. Yes, in the other room, the QR code didn't work. So thank you. I'm so happy to see that here. Yes. So this is the link to my LinkedIn profile. If I'm not connected to some of you, I would love to connect. Make sure you say, hi, I saw your presentation. I was there, so I know who you are. And I made like a special, uh, special something for the ones here who are eventually searching for a remote job. So just say, I was at the event. What is this special offer? And I'll let you know, because we are not supposed to be here on a stage pitching, so I'm just going to do it privately. Okay? Thank you very much.